Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Algorithm Minds. My name is Asan Khurum and in this channel I teach programming skills in Python, MATLAB or R programming. I also teach theoretical concepts as well as practical programming skills in data science, data analysis, statistical analysis or machine learning. So if you are a person who wants to learn programming from scratch or if you are a person who wants to excel his career in data science, I request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell icon button. So as I stated earlier that I am going to produce a series of videos on statistical analysis. So I have already published a lot of videos in statistical analysis in Python programming. So today's is an important lecture because today in today's lecture I'm going to discuss about linear regression using scikit-learn library which is a library in Python. So linear regression is again one of the fundamental many core aspect of uh, statistical analysis. So we are going to first of all discuss that uh, theoretical concepts. Later on, we will are going to exercise that theoretical concept with the help of Python programming. So what you can actually expect from this uh, tutorial is actually we will discuss about concepts, types, assumptions, and evaluation matrix for regression analysis. We will take on a simple linear regression case involving single independent variable just for so for the easiness of your learning, so you can actually grab the concept of linear regression in Python programming. And finally, in the part two of this video, which I'm going to publish later on, I will take a marketing and analytic case study where we'll actually have a real life data set and we will exercise that concept on that data set. So you can actually have a practical experience and hands on experience with that uh, uh, exercise as well. So let's move on and actually discuss about what is linear regression is. So regression analysis is a fundamental statistical technique used to understand the relationship between one or more independent variables and a dependent variable. It aims to predict the value of dependent variable based on the values of independent variables. In simpler terms, regression help us to model and analyze the relationship between variables. We will focus on simple linear regression, which involves a single independent variable. So if you look at this uh, image, which is actually the representation of simple linear regression model, you see this uh, blue dots, which are actually the data points where of uh, our data set. Then we have this regression line, which is actually uh, help us to do the prediction about uh, y variable. Well, so x in our case is an independent variable and y is dependent variable. We will also call x as predictor features and y as to uh, features labels. Uh, so this is the say, representation of linear regression. This is the line of regression where i is equal to b naught plus b1 x where b naught is actually the uh, slope of B1 is actually the slope of a line and B0 is the intercept. And if you can look at this red dot, which is the prediction made by regression analysis about the Y variable. And uh, while the actual value of Y variable was this blue dot here. So the difference between the observed value and the predicted value, okay? The addition between the true value and the predicted value is uh, known as random manner or residual error, which regression analysis tend to minimize. So it tends to find the values of coefficients of ways B0, B1, such that it minimizes uh, that uh, residual error. So that's the theory behind regression analysis. Now let's move on to type of regression analysis. There are multiple type of regression analysis and I'm going to discuss uh, a few of them uh, right now within this tutorial. So the first of all, we have linear regression. This is the simplest form of regression that assumes, assumes a linear relationship between the independent and dependent variable. It aims to fit a straight line to the data point that minimizes the sum of square difference, which is also known as the residual error between the observed and the predicted value. So again, it minimizes the residual, I tend to minimize the residual error by finding that set of coefficients. Then we have polynomial regression. Uh, when the relationship between the independent and dependent variable is not linear, then we have polynomial regressions in use. It involves fitting a polynomial function to the data points. I will uh, explain that concept with the help of a picture. So now you can see that this is the picture on the left hand side is actually a picture of simple linear regression where we have a straight line. The picture on the right hand side is a 
polynomial regression analysis where the relationship is non-linear it's in the form of polynomial function here you can see the change is actually in the form of regression line uh, for linear we have simple linear relationship but for polynomial we will have a polynomial relationship where we have like the uh, y is equal to b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x1 power 2 so which is uh, again a second order polynomial relationship okay now let's discuss about multiple regression in the scenarios where there are multiple independent variable multiple regression is employed <clears throat> it extends the concept of linear regression to predict the dependent variable using two or more independent variables so let me again explain that concept with the help of a picture so this is the, the equation of a one predictor model where you have one independent variable and one uh, uh, dependent variable or true uh, label okay well, or feature label where which you actually want to predict so why is it with the variable you want to predict and uh, x1 is the variable that is a feature variable so now in this case you can see that the equation is just that b naught which is again the intercept and b1 is the slope of the variable and x1 and then we have some random component which is the residual error okay so this is the equation model equation this is the equation for only one independent variable or predicted variable when we talk about uh, multiple predictor model where we have multiple predicting variable in terms of x1 x2 x3 x4 the equation becomes uh, in this form where we have y is equal to b naught then we have separate coefficient for each independent variable so we have b1 for x1 b2 for x2 and b3 for x3 up to so on to bq which is the final value the final number of the independent variable and xq and then the, obviously there is a residual error so when you look at the summary here so y is the outcome value b naught is the intercept e is the error a k residual error x1 to q is the value of predictor variable or predictor features and b1 to q is the slope of that coefficient so that's how you can actually use multiple regression analysis then we have logistic regression despite the name logistic regression is used for classification task so up till line now we were discussing about how regression analysis can predict a value of y so y can take any range of values uh, based on uh, the analysis and based on the data we have in x and y but uh, in logistic regression instead of like predicting the value it actually predict the class of the uh, based on the features feature value we are given it, we are giving to it so what will it like it will predict the class whether this uh, set of features belong to a uh, cat or a dog so it's instead of like uh, actually predicting a value it predicts a class let me again uh, further elaborate the concept with the help of feature so this is like uh, the picture for logistic regression where instead of actually predicting a value why we are actually predicting a probability what is the probability of having a specific class in that case the uh, prediction uh, variable or the, the predictor becomes in the form of this this is again known as sigmoid function so you will learn more about uh, the activation functions and uh, their applications when you are actually learning about uh, neural networks so this is like uh, logistic regression you can say theory wise is the fundamental of uh, neural networks so this is sigmoid function but uh, right now you just say that this is the probability that we are going to predict and based on some threshold value we will decide whether this belongs to uh, this specific class or not yeah, you, can, you can see that the probability of having either zero and one so it's a binomial classification where we have only one and two, zero and one as a classify, classification category. So that's it for like types of regression analysis. Let's move on and actually discuss about the assumptions of regression analysis or linear regression. The first assumption is linearity. The relationship between the independent and dependent variables should be linear. The second one is independent. Observation should not be independent of should be independent of each other it means that they should not be linearly or collinearly related to each other then we have homocedasticity 
the variance of residuals should be constant across all levels of independent variables here the variance of the residual it means the separateness of the residual value that we get after uh, subtracting the two label from the predicted label then we have normality residuals should be follow a normal distribution then we have no multicollinearity there should be no highly correlation between independent values so the uh, uh, independent variable should be non collinear there should not be any multicollinearity exist between them now once you have the idea of uh, assumptions of linear regression analysis based on what conditions we can actually apply in regression analysis and it can help give us a better estimate or prediction now let's move on actually discuss about what are the evaluation metrics of regression obviously when we train a regression model or any machine learning model we have to evaluate its performance so there are number of uh, Uh, definitions and criteria based on which we can actually evaluate a machine learning model so the first one is actually mean square error it measures the average square distance between the actual and predicted values then we have root mean square error it is the square root of the mean square error and provides the interpretable measure in the same unit as the dependent variable then we have r square it measures the proportion of variance in the dependent variable that is predictable from the independent variable so that's for it for the evaluation matrix and i hope this uh, theoretical section has been helpful and let's move on actually jump to practical programming section i know you all of you are actually been waiting where we can actually start uh, exercising that concept in python programming so let's move on and actually jump into the practical programming section so first of all in order to exercise that concept i'm going to import important libraries and for regression analysis Uh, same even a simple linear regression analysis i'm going to import a multitude of libraries and there's specific um, functions so first of all i'm going to import numpy uh, library if i using this python statement import numpy as np where as np is the analyze where so when we actually want to use this numpy library we will use np instead of actually writing the whole name then i'm also going to import pandas library by using this python statement import pandas as pd then i am going also going to import a module pyplot from the library matplotlib by using this uh, python statement here and using ls as pld once i have imported some basic and necessary libraries let's move on and actually import libraries for linear regression the first uh, method i am going to import is train test split this is a method which i am importing from the module model selection from the scikit library so by using this python statement from scikit dot model selection import test train test split the second uh, important uh, class which i am going to import is linear regression from the module linear model and from the lab, library scikit learn by using this python statement and finally i am going to import some evaluation matrix in my case i am going to import the functions mean square error and r2 score from the module matrix from the library scikit learn so that's how you can actually import important libraries and class for in order to train a linear regression model once you have imported that let me just run this block of code for you now once you have imported that let's move on and actually uh, work on uh, generating a data set on which we actually implement our linear regression so for any uh, machine learning algorithm we have either features labels and where we actually use those features label to train our uh, uh, machine learning model then we have uh, feature labels okay feature predictor fe predictor features where we actually use those thing and then we have uh, features label that actually has the classification or even the values that been predicted so we in that case we have x which is and then we have y values so first of all in order to do that first of all i'm going to set the random seed of random number generator of numpy library is equal to 0 this python statement here will help me ensure that whenever the code is or script is run again and again on this computer or any other computer it will have the same number of random number values generated irrespective of how many times the code has been run it is useful for reproducibility where you actually don't want to have a different set of results due to some 
other random numbers being generated. So that being said, once we set the seed, let's move on and actually generate the values for x and y. For x, I'm using uh, this method here, npRandom.rand and um, passing input argument to input argument 100 comma 1. So this actually helps us create a 2D numpy array of the shape 100 comma 1, where will, I will have 100 data points that are randomly extracted between 0 to 1. And then later, once I have extracted those values, the random sets, the randomly extracted values of 100 data points, it is multiplied by 2, that will scale those values. So right now, instead of like I'm having the value from 0 to 1, I will actually have the values from 0 to 2. Now, once you have actually uh, generated x values, which are the predictor features, now let's move on uh, label features, y values. So this, if, I, if you recall that uh, in the assumptions of linear regression, I told you that the relationship must be linear. So that's how we are going to create a linear relationship by equating, by initializing a variable name y and equating its value to four plus three multiplied by x. So it's a linear relationship of x and y. Then we also adding some random noise to it by using this uh, function npRandom.rand and passing input argument 100 comma one. Okay, so again, we are again uh, using the same random function and generating random uh, extracting values from a random distribution of zero and one. And uh, we are adding it to that uh, quantity here, four plus three multiplied by x. So it will be added element wise. So that's how you actually create a data set for your predicted variable features and also uh, label features. Once you have generated that, let me just run this block of code for you. Let's move on and actually plot that data on a scatter plot so we can uh, graphically visualize it how this uh, how how this is, data is generated. So in order to plot that, I'm going to use this function scatter of um, library uh, matplotlib from the module pyplot. So I'm using PLT as a LAS for that specific module. Then I'm calling this function scatter. And uh, within those uh, round brackets, I'm passing two input argument. First one actually is the feature, uh, predictor features. And the second one is actually uh, the label features. And uh, this method here, we actually plot the scatter plot. And then we will you set the title of the scatter plot by using this uh, Python statement here, uh, scatter plot of x and y. Then we will set the x label and y label to x and y by using these two Python statement here. Finally, I'm going to uh, show this plot or render this plot in our environment by using this Python statement here. So let me just run this block of code for you. So now you can see that uh, on x-axis we have a feature label feature predictor features and on y-axis we have uh, feature labels and this is a scatter plot of that and every point here represents a pair value of x and y now once we have plotted the data let's move on and actually we work on splitting the data into training and testing so when why we actually do that for any machine learning algorithm we have a training data set based on which we actually train the model then after training the model we will have some testing data set that we can actually test that model and evaluate its performance so that's why we actually split the data whatever the data has been given to us we actually split it to some portion where some portion of the data is taken as testing data so we can train the model whereas another portion is taken as testing data where we actually can use that data after the model has been trained to test it and evaluate the performance how well it's actually predicting the values so for that purpose i'm going to use this method here train test split which is actually again from scikit library and i'm passing four input arguments here if you see the first input argument is actually the fe predictor features the second input argument is the feature labels the next input argument is test size is equal to 0 0.2. This actually sets the how much portion of data that must be assigned to testing data set. In that, in our case, we set it to 0 0.2, which means 20%. So the 20% of the whole data will be assigned to testing uh, phase. And the remaining 80% will be assigned to training phase. And uh, we are also setting random state is equal to 42. This random state is equal to 42, setting the seed of uh, this splitting 
uh, will actually help us ensure that whenever the stupid is run again and again, we will have the same random extraction of data points for testing and training, irrespective of how many times the course script has been run on or how many pieces has it been run. This is helpful for reproductibility where you actually don't want to change the results of your script or your machine learning algorithm uh, based on the data. So once we have uh, used this Python function, uh, function here, it will actually generate values and pass it to these variables that we have initialized, x train and x test, y train and y test. So x train and y train are actually the uh, predictor features and feature labels for training. Then we have x test and y test, which are the predictor features and predictor labels for our testing data. So let me run, just run this block of code for you. So now we have actually split the data and stored those values in those four uh, variable names. Let's move on and uh, uh, actually train the model. First of all, I'm going to uh, create an instance of uh, the linear regression by using this Python statement here. If you recall that when I was actually importing the Python libraries, I told you that this is a class. So that's why I'm saying that I'm creating an instance of class uh, by using this Python statement here, instead of actually saying that it's a function. And then I'm going to use this method here dot fit that actually takes two input argument, x train and y train, and actually trains the model based on the data we have actually provided it. So let me just run this block of code for you. Now we have actually trained the model based on our training data we are by passing input arguments, uh, predictor features, and label features of the training data set. Once we have done that, now we can also easily implement the method predict and pass input argument x test, which are the predictor features of the testing data set. Based on this predict method, we will actually predict the values of the features uh, of this x test features, and it will actually predict the values and then store it in y, uh, variable y underscore predict, okay? And if you recall that we still also have the two values of this uh, x text features. If you recall that we have y test, which are actually the two values that are actually currently present here. But we pass only the x text uh, features predictor to this predict method based on our uh, train regression that has been trained using training data set. And based on that train data set, based on the train model, it actually predicts the value by using this uh, x text features. And we now have, have y predicted value, which are the predicted values of y. Now, after we have actually calculated the predicted values, now we are going to evaluate some uh, performance matrix. The first one is MSC, which is the measure of average square distance between the observed and the predicted value. Lower value of MSC indicates better model performance. Then we have RMSC that provides a measure of the average magnitude of errors in the predicted values. And finally, we have R square, which is the statistical measure that represents the portion of variance in the independent variable that is predictable from the independent variable. So we have a range from zero to one, where one indicates a perfect fit. So we will use this Python statement here to actually evaluate our uh, evaluation matrix. First of all, I'm going to initialize a variable named MSC and I'm going to use the method mean square error and I'm passing two input arguments to it. The first five is actually is the actual two value of the Y test and the second input argument is actually the predicted value, okay? So based on those two values, based on those two values, it will actually make calculate the mean square error. Once I have calculated the mean square error, I'm simply going to under roots uh, uh, under root square rooted, okay? So then yeah, I will be able to calculate the root mean square error of it by simply just taking the square root of it by using this Python statement. Finally, I'm uh, interested in calculating the R2 square error, which is the coefficient of determination here. 
so uh, I'm going to initialize a variable name R square. Then I'm going to create this value by pass calling the function R square score. And then within those round brackets, I'm passing two input arguments. The first one is actually the actual values of Y for the testing data set. And Y predicted is actually the predicted values of Y. And let me just run this block of code for you. Once we have calculated those values, let me just, uh, before we can actually uh, just print out those values, let's move on and do actually one more interesting exercise where we actually uh, predict the values of two labels and actually the, also predict the lines of, uh, we will actually uh, plot the lines of the two values of y with respect to x. Then we will also plot uh, the regression line where we actually have the predicted values. So in order to do that, first of all, I'm going to call the scatter function of uh, matplotlib uh, uh, module. And I'm passing three input argument. First argument is the x test, which is the uh, predictor features of the testing data. Then we have y test, which are the label features of the testing data. Then we are simply interested in uh, plotting those circles or points by using blue points. So that's the last input argument actually sets the color of the points. Then we are using plot method uh, of the same module pi plot and I'm passing x test, which is the uh, predictor features of the testing data set. Then I'm also passing y predicted, which are the actually predicted values from the uh, regression model. And then I'm setting the color of this line to red. Uh, finally, I'm going to uh, declare its title and I'm going to uh, declare its uh, X labels and Y label for better representability. And then finally, I'm going to show that plot. So now you can see that this plot visually demonstrates how well the linear regression model fits the testing data. The scatter plot shows the actual data points while the regression line represents the rep uh, relationship between that has been predicted by the model. So that's how you can actually plot those values where we a red line represents the regression line the, that is based on the prediction of y values and y dots are actually the two values of that data set from the testing phase. Once we have plotted that, let's now move on and actually just simply print those values. We are using simple print functions and passing the string as an input argument. Then I was also using format method here that actually formates the values of MSC, RS, RS, RMSC and R2 up to four decimal points and then finally putting it inside the string. Uh, once uh, let me run this block of code for you. Now you can see that the values of uh, uh, that the values of R, MSC, RMSC and R square, which we calculated earlier in our code uh, is being shown in this block of code here. So that's it for now. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. You are able to grab some concept of uh, linear regression, uh, its assumption, its types, and also you are able uh, practically able to exercise those concepts with the help of Python programming. In an upcoming lecture, I will take an actual marketing data set from a real world scenario and we will exercise the concept of linear regression on that data set. So you can actually have a, a more robust uh, practical experience of uh, linear regression and working on an actual data set. So this will be the part two of the video which I will be posting soon. So I will request you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell icon button. So as soon as I post the video, so you get the notification of that video and take advantage of it. That's it for now. I will catch you soon in the next video.